I'll be completely honest here, I don't know what to make of this one. Um, hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Erin the Bookquester. Today I have this awesome, honestly quite confusing historical fiction book, Jep, who defied the stars of a Catherine Marsh herself. Now, I just read this, and I'm a little bit confused. Well, it's a historical fiction book that is based back in the late 5th, uh, 16th century, and it's based in Denmark about a Danish dwarf. Well, we'll get on to that. Well, let's get on with the plot. So the main character is Jep, who is literally in the title, so I think that should be pretty much obvious. And Jep was born disfigured, and he when his height when he was 13 was the same as his height when he was 7. So basically, he didn't grow at all. And then this guy named Don said that he should live a life of a court dwarf, who would apparently be given loads of honors, eat lots of good food, and brush shoulders with royalty. So, allured by these nice words and this promising life, he joins Don and goes to the court of Infanta in Uraniburg. Great. And there he finds out that it isn't really good. They're laughed at and they're there to amuse the Infanta and her guests. They have to do whatever she wishes. A fake dwarf wedding? Why not? Sure. And so many other things. And it's just a really bad life. It isn't necessarily a good life. It's being laughed at in a cage in front of a crowd of people and then telling jokes and making yourself the butt of the joke that you don't even want to think about. And that is the life of a court dwarf. Then, she loves, uh, falls in love with Laia, another court dwarf. Then, of course, Laia goes off with another boy, then she becomes pregnant. Now, obviously, the other boy who went out with Laia, who he knows as Robert, the giant, they think that he's the dad, obviously. I mean, they've been going out. And then, of course, they find out that another evil court dwarf, who is a little bit of a Zeus type guy, you know, he goes around with all the girls and sleeps with them. Ugh, disgusting piece of crap. And he had impregnated her. That is the best way to say it. And Laia wants to escape this hell of a place, and she wants her child to grow free. And that's what she does, and together they try to leave. Except that, you know, Laia decides that that's the exact time when her pangs, when her infant was gonna get born, and they had to go to a nearby house by which they were captured. Laia, Laia who gave birth to a stillborn child who died, and Laia died, and basically Jeff blamed himself for killing Laia. Then he was beat up by Don, and who, and Hendrika, Hendrika, or however you pronounce it, um, hugged, hugged him, and they sent him away, far, far away, to a place where a man named Taik resided. No, Taiko. <laughs> such a hard name. And he finds out that only there he has to be a court dwarf again. A little more than a laughter, a plaything for lords. But Tycho is different than all the masters that he has met. He isn't the same as the nobles who he had met at Uraniburg. He considered skill above anything else. And when Tyke found out that he could speak that our dear Jeb, who is a little bit of a prodigy, who could speak both Greek and Latin, and was very eager to study. Well, he at first he helped in minor things like filling ink for the scholars, then he started to join in the, on the discussions and finally became a fellow scholar. She also, he also fell in love with Magellan, who is the daughter of Tycho. Then, he, he's still plagued by the thoughts of the past. You see, his mother never told about, told our dear Jep 
who his father was, and he wants to know. So he goes back to that village where he was born in, his hometown, and he seeks his mother, except he finds out that his mother died in a fever nearly a year ago. Cold. And he finds out that that mother wasn't even his mother, his actual mother. He finds out that she was adopted. Great. And he finds out that Don, the very guy who beat him up, was the one who brought him there in the first place. So he goes back to the dreaded Uraniburg to try to find out the truth. And there the truth he finds. He finds out that Hendrika, the strangely nice gentlewoman who had taken care of the dwarves, was his true mother. And that Don was his uncle, and his father was a rich nobleman who had passed away a couple years back. Wow. And then he hears from Hendrika that 10 gold, 50 gold pieces or something was given to our, our dear Jeb's mother, adopted mother. And he found out, he knows that his mother was given wasn't given any sort of money, so he goes to Don and said, You are a thief, give me the money. Don, of course, rejects him, and Jeb goes away. But this one guy who worked for... Who worked for Don, who actually had a conscience, and he was a good man, he's a good guy. And he went along, and he gave Don... He find he tells... He, I mean, he tells Jeb, that he actually has a huge inheritance from his father, and he had managed to steal some of it from Don's collection, a good amount of money, in Jeb's hands. And with that, he, that will be a suitable draw, dowry to marry with Magellan. So that is a little bit of a happy ending, and that is the end of the book. Yeah. Okay, it was very confusing. And multiple themes are going on in this book. One thing is about, like, we have these thoughts about people with disabilities or dwarves or anyone, honestly, that is different from normal people. And we shun them and we don't give them jobs or something like that. But we judge by how they look. But in Tycho's court, he judges people by their abilities, by their way to think, by their brains, by what really matters. So I think that kind of shows like the first depths of modern society and how we judge people these days and I think that it's a really nice theme that's in there it's also a, it's actually a historical fiction so the thing is this guy named Jep he, he actually existed of course he's barely a single word mentioned in the history books about a court dwarf of Tycho and no one knows where he came from or what he was like but our dear author, she made, managed to make this hero, this character, this wonderfully complicated character with this wonderfully complete life story. And I think that's mighty impressive. And yeah, so many multiple themes. I'm actually really, really confuddled with this one. Because usually historical fiction or realistic fiction, they're pointedly obvious. Wow, it's about a guy growing up. Yes? Yeah, I kind of got that from, like, the blurb, hello? But this book really still does not cease to confuse me, because one part of me thinks it's a thing about Jep growing up and facing his future, because multiple times, his friends and family and people, just they say that your fate has been decided, your fate has been decided by God, by the stars, by the day you were born. And Jep rejects that, says it was his will, it was his decisions to come to this place and become who he was now. And it's kind of independence and choosing your own life. Leading and shaping and molding your own life story. Taking control of your own life. That is another message, another very strong message that the book seems to portray. And hence the title, Jep Who Defied the Stars, Jep Who Defied His Fate. You know, I guess that kind of does make some sense. And in a lot of ways, this book was a really, really good one. I really enjoyed it. Something about the writing kept making me read it, read it, and 
read it and it's just it's so wonderfully based on reality has so many themes and the character is so intriguing and all of the characters seems to have their own little backstory and their own little philosophies it's so incredibly detailed it is such an epic book i highly recommend you to read it and like always your book quester Aaron the book quester i mean you know it, it was literally a realistic fiction book for like 20 minutes and then suddenly they turned into historical fiction then i found out it was a romance then i found out it was historical fiction again yeah could, do, do you get why i'm confused well it is a great book read it definitely if you have the time or if you don't have the time